of these games, all right, of the uh, of the eight games that we are we're looking forward to, which one are you most looking forward to? You know, it's kind of interesting. I mean, as a basketball coach, probably Virginia, Michigan State. You know, as a fan, yeah, the drama of obviously Louisville, Kentucky is off the charts. Uh, you know, just Cal and Rick and Kentucky and Louisville and different styles of play. But as a basketball coach, you know, the the, the Virginia Michigan State game is just going to be a terrific game. Should Florida be worried about UCLA? Yeah, yeah, I think they should be worried. Yeah, I mean, no, Sweet 16 teams have won a lot of games. UCLA is a very good offensive team. You know, we've heard all about Kyle Anderson and his size looking over the defense. And no one's talking about Jordan Adams. Jordan Adams can flat score. He's a six foot five inch. He's got an old school game. He can shoot the ball with range. Really good playing off screens. And then they got two fifth year seniors in the Wear Twins. They've been in school like since I had hair on my head. I mean, huh. these guys have been around forever. And they're physical and they're tough. And, and Norman Powell's a pretty good player. Levine comes off the bench and he's a good, yeah, they, they should be. UCLA's improved defensively. Having said that, I think that when you talk about a team that's connected offensively and defensively, when you talk about a team that has versatility offensively and defensively, it's hard to go against Florida. You know, we were talking with Jim Beheim about this yesterday, Seth, and I want to get your take on it. Michigan State against Virginia, and all you ever hear Boy, Tom Izzo is, is just a great tournament coach. If that's true, what makes somebody a great tournament coach? I think it's preparation. I think in you know, getting through all uh, the static and finding at the essence of that game. All right, what exactly? What's the essence of, of what we have to do to be successful in this game? And then also creating a vision for his team on how he's going to approach the tournament. Mm -hmm. You know, making each, you know, each round a four-team tournament. Uh, you know, kind of compartmentalizing it rather than you know saying we got to get to the final four. No, we got let, let's win the first round of this fourteen bracket today. So he looked at Cincinnati, Harvard, and Delaware and said, "That's who we have to worry about, guys." Exactly. Okay. That's nothing else. So let's lock in on this. All right, let's take care of business here. He creates a good vision. I think you know, getting through all the minutia of saying, "All right, you know, you get a scouting report. You got to prepare your team in three days." Some people over prepare. Or some people have the ability to find the essence of who their opponent is. And then once you find the essence of who they are, then you're going to say, right, what are we going to give? What are we going to take away? And I think Tom is just terrific at that. What does it say about the SEC that they've got three teams in the pack <laughs> as well that they have this many teams in the Sweet 16? You know, I say for the SEC, here's what I say. I say Florida was the best team in the country pretty much throughout the season. They ran through their conference. Tennessee and Kentucky were the two hottest teams in their league at the end of the season, playing their best basketball. Uh, they picked a good time to play well. Uh, Kentucky, they weren't a number eight seed. I mean, if you watch, they were one shot away from being Florida in the SEC championship game. They had the ball with a chance to win. You know, Tennessee, with all the static about Coach Martin and Bruce Pearl and all that jazz, I think Coach Martin got his group in, in a room and said, here's the I'm your coach. You either with me or not with me. If you're with me, this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to defend. This is how we're going to play. And if we do this, we could be a really good team because all of a sudden, Jordan L. Stokes might be the most darn uh, dominating player in the tournament. And, you know, they're taking care of the basketball. You know, Richardson's knocking down jumpers. They're, they're playing with a hardness and a toughness that you need to do to win. And, you know, like uh, back to Kentucky, just to get off track, but, that's one of the things that upsets me about the, 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 seat, the seating process. You, you think the committee, they spend probably four months going over everything to select the field. Then the most important time, next, the next most important thing is to seed the field. And, you know, they won't wait. They had, they had the, the field seated before the SEC championship game. We knew Florida was going to be number one. Right. But if, if, if Kentucky's in the finals and the way they played, Making Kentucky an eight and say a UMass a, a, a six or a St. Louis a five, to me, because they didn't want to make a change the last day, doesn't make any sense. Seating is just, once the field is set, to me, seating should be a priority. If it takes an, another hour, if you have to redo, make some adjustments, then make them. But don't be so set in how you're going to see the tournament coming into that last day. And I've seen that so much, Seth. I mean, year to year, uh, the, 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 the tournament finals that are on that Sunday, it seems like it doesn't make a difference in the way they see teams. It's just ridiculous. And people are paying to see those tournament games, too. Yeah, Exactly. And, and, and let's think about last year, or, that Oregon team. 
misseeded. Right. I mean, and to me, it wasn't fair to Wichita State to have to play Kentucky in the second. Wichita State's a Final Four potential team. That was that was the best game maybe I watched all season. That wasn't Duke and Syracuse. And and you saw the shots that were made in that game, the level, the intensity, the execution. And it wasn't fair to Wichita State. And I don't know if it's a Cal thing. I, don't, I have no idea. But I know one thing. If you watched that team play all season, and then you saw them the last two weeks or last week and a half, play, and, and that, you wouldn't have made them a number eight seed. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, that, that game, uh, uh, the, the game, uh, you know, Kentucky and Louisville, that's the one that I can't wait to watch. But I'm on the outside looking in. You're on the inside. And all I've ever heard, Seth, be honest with us, do Patino and, and Calipari <laughs> despise each other as much as we hear? I, I, it, uh, despise is a tough word. I mean, this is a competitive <laughs> business. They're not going and having pasta down, you know, you know, in, in the village tomorrow. I mean, here, here, here's the thing. You know, back in the day, let, 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 I'm going to put in your guys. Back in the day, right. Rick was John's greatest supporter. Yep. He helped him get the UMass job. And you know what? John did a terrific job. Now Rick leaves Kentucky, the best job in college basketball probably, the most powerful job, and he goes to the pros. And through, you know, a cycle, Cal now has his job. And that's kind of the way it is. And then so he goes to the arch rival. And now they're beating each other's brains in. So I hate to long word, a, 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 a tough word. I do think that Rick's in a place in his life where he's kind of more at peace with it. Right. I think Cal's a place in his life where he's still got, you know, he still feels like he's, you know, he's not the Hall of Famer yet. He doesn't get the respect as a coach that he deserves because he's a terrific coach. 